Come on, get the right key. Oh, shoot, we gotta start the show. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Hey there, and welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage. If this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, there's a playlist of our entire third season of LFF. Stick around, and uh, if you like what you see here, go ahead and get subscribed, because we're gonna be doing a lot more printing uh, here in 2021 and coming up very shortly. Today I've got my box of goodies here from back in my alternative printing process days, and we're gonna jump back into some Alt Pro. Back in season two, I built this really inexpensive UV light box and I had some pretty poor first results with it, just initial testing. And I wanted to do the cyanotype process some justice, so that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna to be showing you how to coat and expose some cyanotype prints with some little tips and tricks along the way. So just as a brief reminder of what the cyanotype process is, a cyanotype is an alternative photographic process print. So alt process just means something that's a non-silver process. This uses ferric ammonium citrate as well as potassium ferrocyanide uh, to create a unique emulsion that is still sensitive to ultraviolet light that's coated on a paper. In this case, some watercolor paper. This is some Fabriano Artistico, which is one of my favorite stocks. Another requirement of many alternative photographic processes, especially those that require UV light, is you have to have a negative that's the same size as your finished print. It's a contact only printing process. If you try to enlarge with alternative photographic processes, while it's not impossible, it is very improbable because of the intense amount of light you would need and the very, very prolonged exposures. Uh, our best bets for reproducible results with something like this are to have an ultraviolet source that's relatively close and controllable. If we're in an area like here in Ohio where the sun is whatever, uh, having a UV exposure unit like the one I built uh, back in season two of LFF can really, really help our case. All right, so let's go over some of the materials that we're gonna need to make some cyanotype prints today. Some of these will be optional, but there's a few that we really shouldn't do without. Let's dig into the box here. So to coat our paper, we're gonna need some cyanotype chemicals. We're gonna need a cyanotype part A, which is your ferric ammonium citrate, and cyanotype part B, which is your potassium ferrocyanide. You're gonna use equal amounts A and B later on. So I've got those, those are pre-mixed. Uh, if you need to mix some yourself, I'm gonna put a link in the description to some formulas for mixing it. You're gonna need distilled water and then those two powdered form chemicals. You can also buy pre-mixed kits if mixing yourself is not your thing. You're gonna need something to coat. I'm just using a simple foam brush. I know this is like heresy to people that are hardcore. Uh, for the hardcore guys here, I'll show you my hockey brush. It's, it's nice, but this guy's only for platinum. If you wanna speed up the drying process, you can do so by using a hair dryer. I wouldn't recommend getting an expensive one. Just get one that's gonna stay dedicated to this process. You probably don't wanna use this on your hair again because it is gonna absorb uh, some of those chemicals from the air. Now for some optional stuff. You can wash the finished cyanotype print, you develop it, in water. You can do distilled water, or if you have harder water, go ahead and use that. There are some optional additives we can do to that. Uh, some folks report better contrast and tonal range control by using uh, some added acid, either to the paper before coating or during development. I like to do it during development, and you can do that with a few different additives. One of those additives is by adding some white vinegar. Uh, you can use any vinegar uh, or citric acid if you like. Uh, you can also, if you have some, optionally you can also use oxalic acid. So if you're doing other alternative processes like platinum palladium that require this, well, you've got a bunch. You can add a very weak 1% solution of that. And if you're the inpatient type and you wanna see those final beautiful blues pop up right away before it fully dries, you can also speed up that process uh, with about 30 mils per liter of some hydrogen peroxide. Just the standard cheap stuff. You don't have to buy anything super concentrated. Just what you can get at the, uh, the local pharmacy is great. 
Paper-wise, we're gonna need something to coat and print on. I have some big uncut sheets of this Fabriano Artistico. It's a little bit cheaper when you buy it in the full sheet. This is a 22 by 30, that's the standard size. Uh, this will make me about six prints if I tear them really close. And uh, a tool that, a tool that captivated so many of you last time uh, was this uh, this dual edge ripper. I picked this uh, I picked this up uh, on the used market. Uh, Someone was pretty much ready to throw it away, and these things are awesome. All this ruler does is it kind of helps you tear uh, the paper in such a way that you get to have these uh, these extra ridges or deckled edges all along, even after you've uh, you've torn or cut the paper. Kind of cool. And like many things darkroom, you're also gonna need access to water. It doesn't have to be running water, but running water preferably because you're gonna be doing a lot of fill and dump uh, or slow rinsing of water. And some trays. I just have these flat bottom trays. I like these because I can use them for coating the emulsion. Uh, this particular emulsion, it's gonna stain a lot of things. So if you can do it in something that's rinsable or relatively disposable, great. Uh, you don't wanna wear your, your Sunday best when you're doing this kind of stuff. All right, let's cut up some paper. So with our paper down to size, let's get some gloves on and coat some sheets. The lighting in here is a little bit different. I'm using nothing but weaker incandescent lighting because we don't want to accidentally expose this stuff before we need to. Uh, it should look like a greenish yellow when you coat it and when it dries on the paper. If it's any bit blue, it's because it's gotten too much white or UV light contaminating it, and we don't want that to happen. Get out my little measuring tool here. I love these little Pyrex shot glasses. Just make sure you never use it for like booze or anything after you use it for photochemistry. I'm gonna put just, just under five mils each of cyanotype A and cyanotype B, and that's gonna more than cover a single sheet. Five mils of A. Five mils of B. Let's give a little stir in our shot glass here. See, it's still got a yellowish green, which is where we want it. Let's grab a sheet of paper. Got the one that I had the not so great tear on and left a corner, but this will still be good for testing. So I'm gonna lay that side up. On this Fabriano, you can really coat either side. I like to do it where the Fabriano print is facing, is right reading. So I've got that. Take about half of my solution, coat it here. And the coating motion is gonna be pretty straightforward. We're just gonna kind of make a giant circle. So. Right, up, left, down. Right, up, and I'm getting progressively gentler as I brush. Left, down. And I'm going in this circle motion so I can make sure it's spreading the coat out. Right, up, left, down, right, okay, and we're going to put that one up to dry. Just have a glass of water that I'm going to put that into, and let's get this one. I have a little drying cabinet, but you can just hang them to dry or blow dry them, whichever you prefer. Now as an optional step, we can uh, use the hair dryer here to kind of speed up the process between the first coat getting nice and dry and the second coat of the emulsion going on. And usually low is good enough. High is just too high speed.
Okay, so we're just waiting for the final few minutes of drawing. I wanted to show you what we're printing today. I've got two negatives that are my goal to print today on these six sheets of paper, and they're two from my Ohio Uninterrupted series. Uh, one was taken down in the Hocking Hills area, and the other one in Clifton Gorge, a place I visited previously in season one of LFF. So these are pyro stained negatives. Hopefully you can see uh, the effect of the stain. It has like a, a bit of a, a bit of a color cast to it. And that's actually gonna help with our UV print processes. Uh, that extra little bit of color tone from the stain is gonna create an extra masking layer. Uh, these are especially great. One of the main reasons I started developing in PyroCat is so I could get that dual purpose negative, something that prints decently well on silver, scans okay, and even has some UV alt process properties. <clears throat> okay, so we have our paper ready to go. We're gonna grab our negative. I like to start with the thinner of the two negatives just so I can establish my times and make sure everything's good. On these double coated cyanotypes, I'm getting about 15 minutes of exposure time. So I'm gonna take my negative, shiny side up, also known as emulsion side down. We can find that because of that notch code, the same thing we use to load our large format holders. So I'm gonna place that emulsion side down, try to get it all within the confines of this. Open this guy up. I've just got a flat surface underneath and then something nice and flat like this big thick pane of glass to press everything into contact. You don't need a contact print frame if you don't want one. Nice big thick piece of glass does the trick. Okay, see everybody back here in 15 minutes. So while our first exposure is going, it's a great time to set up our baths. So for developing this out, really all we're doing is we're rinsing it in water until that excess emulsion, that yellow coating we put on there, completely washes away. This is typically uh, 10 to 20 minutes of gentle running water. Now, a lot of folks, myself included, don't like the standard kind of burned in contrast that you get with the traditional cyanotype process, which is what we're doing today. Uh, the highlights just kind of wash out too easily, even with extra exposure and careful control. So we can also start to alter that contrast in the development step by adding different things to water, typically acids. We can do this by using citric acid, so we can go natural, we can go like lemon juice or vitamin C, or we can start using acetic acids like distilled vinegar, or we can just go for the straight up stuff like glacial acetic acid. This is, uh, this is some nasty stuff, AKA the poison warning on there. You need very, very little. We're talking like a 1% uh, solution of this stuff, or we can use varying dilutions of the vinegar. Some folks will even go as far to develop it straight out. Yeah, so we can do that kind of extra control uh, in the developer steps. I'm gonna add that right to water. I'm gonna go for glacial acetic acid because I have a lot of this stuff. So I'm gonna add one mil of this to 100 mils of water. I'm gonna fill up my 11 by 14 tray with about a liter. So 10 mils of this is gonna make a liter of developer. Okay, so our exposure is just about done here. We're in the final few seconds. When I stop this and pull this out, you're gonna see a lot of overexposed areas, uh, especially around the edge of the film. Let's go ahead and take a look. Pull out my glass. Okay, so uh, there is the print. Lift off the negative and we should see, hey, yeah, our image. Uh, now you are gonna see some really solarized areas. So this is areas that are just super, super, super grossly exposed. Uh, and that should only take place in the deepest blacks in the image. And the highlights should be really low because those are going to uh, rinse out pretty quickly once we get it into the bath. So let's head in. Okay, so as a reminder, here's our print. Uh, this is our bath with the glacial acetic acid. It definitely smells like vinegar in here and we're just gonna gently slide that in. Just let it kinda, kinda do its thing. Just be gentle. Don't need to do too, too much to it. Just let it kinda hang out. Jostle it around a little bit, but you don't wanna go too bad on it. We are washing off quite a bit of the blue and that is, well, that's what the rinsing does. No more than a minute. I'm just gonna drip it off right now. i move this to a standard water bath. Just 
a way to get uh, the rest of this uh, blue out of it without having to wait days and weeks, we can actually accelerate that oxidation uh, with some simple hydrogen peroxide. So I have about a, I have about 50 mils to this liter in here and watch what happens as soon as I put it in. It's going to deepen those blues. Oh yes, and now that lovely color is coming in. Now this isn't boosting contrast or anything. This was all stuff that was going to happen when it dried, but we get to see it wet and really evaluate things. See if our highlights fall where they want to. Our shadows deepen really nicely in here, which I, I really like. I really like how this turned out. This is a nice long tonal scale for a, uh, for a cyanotype. This is probably the most effort I've put into cyanotype. And all thanks to your guys' comments on the, uh, the original UV video, so thanks. Let's hang this first one up to dry. So we're coming up now on the end of our second negatives exposure. This one's a little bit more dense than the previous print, so we're closer to the 30 minute mark time-wise versus the 15-20 minutes we were doing before, plus the added contrast control of the acid bath. So let's turn this off here and see what we got. All right. Ooh, this is nice and warm. So we've got our negative here. This is a different negative. This is not uh, not HP5. This one is Tri-X. Not that it's going to matter too much. Now you can see the outside we have like this browning. This is a full solarization of the of the rebate area and really 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 dark shadow areas starting to solarize but that's fine. That's going to be jet black and then all of this really nice highlight detail which hopefully we'll keep in the finished print. Looking pretty good, so I'm going to pop it into our clearing bath. Now this has the acetic acid, so we should see quite a bit of that blue coming off of it, but hopefully we're going to get a bit more in the highlights this time around. Oh, and yes, we, uh, we have quite a bit of clearing action, my goodness. Well, I can sleep a little more comfortably now, seeing that we did cyanotype a little bit better than we did last time. If you have any questions about the cyanotype process as I outlined it today, or you want to share your tips for working with cyanotype, drop those down below in the comments. And for those long form questions, always feel free to shoot me an email, largeformatquestions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by, and we'll catch you next week for more LFF.